Again, I'd ask the question, do most Californians ever use this word? Hello, I'm Lawrence and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond and one of those memos pertains to words. Specifically, words that are regional to a specific region. And since the turn of this year I've taken words from America's east coast and southern states and try to guess their meaning. And it's a very frightening affair because usually I'm somebody who relies heavily on research. And just putting myself out there and relying on instinct, which usually leads me astray, is a nerve-wracking process. Nonetheless, this series, which has been unfathomably popular among my subscribers, must continue. And so today, I'm gonna to be hopping over to the West Coast, not literally, and working my way through 15 words that are pretty regional to the West Coast, or at the very least got their start there. Now, before I get underway, some definitions of the West Coast will include Alaska and Hawaii, but since those two states have their own interesting regionalisms, I think I'm gonna save those for another day. So for these purposes, when I'm talking about the Western United States, I basically mean California and the Pacific Northwest states of Washington and Oregon. And so without further ado, here comes my attempt at guessing what these US West Coast words mean. A uh, nice easy one to start with, I think. The word hella, which I believe originated in California, but is definitely made outside of there by now. And it's kind of like, isn't it, just sort of like how Bostonians might say wicked. They might utilize the word wicked to say wicked good. You hear the phrase hella good. So I think it, it just means really, doesn't it? Like really good. It's, it's kind of an intensifier. I believe that's the meaning of it. But as with all of these words and the words that we've used in past videos, I will in real time look up the definition because I've been given some nice handy links. Hella is an American slang term that originated in the San Francisco Bay Area. It is used as an intensifying adverb such as in hella bad or hella good. Cougar? Oh goodness, this could go one of several ways. I'm suspecting that it's uh, to do with the animal, and apparently this is specific to the Pacific Northwest and potentially other places, but cougar in this sense is, a f is some sort of cat, and I can't remember what other words are for it. I think puma is one, isn't it, that's used somewhere. I just remember this coming up at some point in one of those kind of dialect quizzes that I did, but I can't remember exactly what it is, because we don't really have them in Chicago. Cargo, so I don't I don't bump into too many cougars at least not this definition of the word So let's take a look at exactly what a cougar is and that might educate you and me So due to its wide range the cougar has many names It can go by the puma mountain lion catamount panther or painter who knew they were good at art apparently their population is specifically high out west and in Florida Bear claw. This is a Californian word or phrase or thing, and I remember seeing this in a previous video that I did. But the problem is, you sometimes forget some of the uh, things you've looked up in the past, and I cannot remember if bear claw is just literally a bear's claw or if it's something else. Like for example, you might go to the state fair and get an elephant ear. It's not an actual elephant ear. That would be just dreadful. It is just some fried fair food. I'm wondering if bear claw was something like that. I think it was, but I can't remember exactly what it is. So what is it? Let's take a look. Okay, a bear claw is a sweet yeast raised pastry, a type of Danish, originating in the United States during the mid-1920s, and the phrase is more common in Western American English. Potato bug, apparently a term that is quite common in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, don't know, is this another example of a dessert? Would you eat it? I don't know. I mean, it could be a genuine type of bug, but it's not something I've ever heard of. Are there bugs that get into potatoes? I'm gonna guess that a potato bug is a baked potato that is cut in such a way that it looks like a bug. And I'd never eat that. So this that can't be the answer. What have we got? A potato bug is apparently a word used in the Pacific Northwest to mean wood louse. And I must say, I haven't eaten one of those since I was six. Noho, specific to California, don't know this. Uh, rhymes with Soho. Maybe it's, you know, to describe an area of California that is a bit like Soho in London, or not that. 
because something else I've realized is it's got an uppercase H and they do that for things like um, SoCal. So it could be a, a, an abbreviation of a place, but in that sort of sense, but I just can't think where. North somewhere, North Hospital, North Ho, Ho, Hoth. That's Star Wars, that doesn't work. I don't know what that would be. No ho, no ho, there's no hope for me. North Hollywood, of course it's North Hollywood. I've never heard that phrase before. I mean, I've heard of SoCal, I've heard of uh, people outside of San Francisco saying San Fran and all that, but it seems like California just sort of specializes in or is a magnet for those kind of abbreviations. Sunbreak, that could mean that in the middle of your work day, you take a break from work to go and get a little bit of sun, right? It's in the Pacific Northwest where they don't get a lot of that. So, oh no, no, maybe, maybe because they don't get a lot of it, it's sort of a word that celebrates the fact that the clouds have broken up and you can get a bit of sun on you. You know, we have that concept in England. We just don't have a word for it, I don't think. Let's take a look. Sunbreak, a passage of sunlight in the clouds during dark, rainy weather. How good am I? I obviously am from England. June gloom. This one apparently comes from California. June as in a person's name? Is it similar to negative Nancy, right? America likes to sort of coin words and phrases to describe someone who is pessimistic about a certain thing and stick a woman's name in it. In this case, it rhymes. June gloom. I That has to be what it is. June gloom is a California term for a weather pattern that results in cloudy, overcast skies with cool temperatures during the late spring and early summer. You put that in there to go with sunbreak, didn't you? Come to think of it though, when I was in San Francisco, it was very overcast the whole time. And it was June. I've experienced June gloom. What? What? I have never seen this. Yadadam. Yadada mean. Yadada mean. Yo dada is mean. That's what it's getting at. Yo dada is mean. You have a very nasty father. Probably not, but that's why I have to go with because I've never seen this word before. Don't know what it means. Again, it's Bay Area slang and it means, do you know what I mean? Evidently not. Your dada, how do you say it? Your dada mean. Your dada mean? Your dada mean? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? I get it! I get it! I understand now, now that I've said it, you know, properly. Dank. I've heard the phrase dank meme, right? This is one of the terms that the kids use, the kids as in millennials, of which I am one. But I don't fully know what it means. I've never really looked into that. I just, I've always assumed it means not great. It sounds like it means disgusting. I think it also has a connection to something unmentionable on this channel for monetization purposes. But in this case, I believe this is probably connected to dank memes. So let's take a look what it does meme, uh, mean, I can't speak. Dank is a substitute for good, apparently. Lawrence's new haircut is dank. I'm never saying that again. Duff. When I think of the word duff, I think of duff beer from The Simpsons. And in fact, this is from the Pacific Northwest, right? Creator of The Simpsons said that the Springfield in The Simpsons is sort of modeled in his head after the one in Oregon. So I'm seeing connections here. I'm seeing connections. I just don't know what they are. Maybe it's what they call beer out in the Pacific Northwest. I could go in for a, a glass of Duff right now. I've just remembered the faux pas I made with the potato bug earlier on. So maybe it will pair well with that. Let's take a look. Duff is forest litter. What is that? Leaves and stuff that you would walk on. Is it in wide use? Are any of these words in wide use? Or is it a case of, you know, previous generations use them but they're dying out or that sort of thing? Because you'd think that you'd hear them in things like television shows, but in some of these cases, I'm hearing them for the first time. Well, the same certainly can't be said for this word. The word gnarly, I think, is, is pretty well known for being tied to surfer speak. And I'm not sure of its specific meaning. I mean, I suppose it just means, you know, good again or great. Oh, look at this gnarly wave. Maybe it means big. Again, I'd ask the question, do most Californians ever use this word? What I've heard over the years is that Californians get lumped with words like this and valley girls speak as well, but most Californians don't speak this way. The Californian friends that I have have never said the word gnarly to me and frankly, I'm disappointed in them. Gnarly in this sense does mean cool or excellent, bodacious, man.
Spendy. Okay, this apparently this is a Pacific Northwest word. To me, I mean, the obvious answer would be that that is a person who spends a lot of money. They spend way too much money on bear claw or cougars. You know, if they if they're interested in keeping cats, that's what it means. Spendy means they spend a lot of money. Spendy means expensive. So an example would be what? We'd love to hire Lawrence to come and clean up our doff, but his rates are quite spendy. I like that. I think I'm going to use that more in conversation and be met with puzzled looks. Swoop. This is, it's a California phrase. We obviously have the word swoop in the rest of English, but I'm assuming it doesn't mean the same thing. Swoop is, it's, I, I'm guessing it's still a verb. It would sound weird as a noun. Here's a bag of swoops. Swoop. You're in California, you're walking down the beaches, and you want to swoop something. You want to swoop a sunbed. So it means to claim something, to swoop it. Oh my absolute god. It does sort of mean that. A term used to say pick up. Sometimes this term is used as steal as well, which when it comes to sunbeds describes me perfectly. I didn't admit that. Post up. This comes from uh, California and as somebody who posts things online, I imagine this is California's way of saying just that. Lost in the Pond posted up a new video. Go check it out and subscribe. No, really do. So am I right or wrong? Let's take a look. So post up is used when you're telling someone to stand by or wait. So Lawrence, before you dive into the next word, why don't you post up and think about it? All right, I thought about it and I don't know what this means. The industry sort of implies the industry as opposed to multiple industries. California, where this word comes from, is noted, of course, for two major industries. You've got Silicon Valley and the entertainment industry. And I believe I've heard the industry used by film producers and directors when they're just sort of vaguely talking about the circle of Hollywood. So I imagine it's to do with that. But as somebody who Hollywood continues to snob, not my words, they are my words, I'm not entirely sure. So let's take a look. Well, glaze my face in, honey. The industry is indeed short for the entertainment industry. I think I did all right on that. I mean, you know, don't get me wrong, I did dreadfully. But the fact that I guessed two or three of them correctly is pretty gnarly. And so that's it for this episode. Let me know in the comments below some other regions of the United States whose quirky vocabulary I should try to guess the meaning of. I'm Lawrence Brown. Please follow me on Twitter at Lost in the Pond US. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel or you'll be lost in the pond. You know what I mean? In the meantime, if you want more of this, but in secret, why not join my secret live streams by becoming a patron of Lost in the Pond? You can do that at Patreon patreon.com slash lost in the pond until the next video later dudes